My name is Deron Chavis, urban farmer, community activist, and food justice advocate. Join me and my comrades as we talk resiliency, community, social justice, and why black space matters. Community green space is one of the most important things that we find in this work. But community green space is also a story of the people that find themselves in the spaces. Today, we're going to be walking around and kicking it with one of my good friends, the awesome Allison Hurst of hey. Legacy Farm. <laughs> How are you hey, doing? Good to see you, friend. What's up? Hey, you know, we out here just surviving in this heat, but, you know, helping steward the rest of the things on here. They're thriving. Yeah, it looks thriving. amazing. It's so tell us who you are. What okay. is it you do? Um, I am a human spirit of art, of <laughs> motherhood, a product of my ancestors. I am a community neighbor. Nice. I am an advocate and a mentor and a teacher, uh, a foodie and a cook. Wow. Uh, okay, but a else? gardener. And I believe that what we're doing here on the land parallels with everything that we do mm. out in the world. Also a uh, uh, member of the uh, CHAT organization, is yeah, that Yeah, CHAT, Churchill Activities and Tutoring. It's, it's something way different than that now, but our program is a part of a, a cooperative, a workforce development program that seeks to uh, equip and help elevate and empower our young people to go out into the workforce. And so right. we have four uh, dividing groups in that. Check. Ours is one at the farm. They have a carpentry shop, mm. a, sp a screen printing shop, and a bistro, which what? is also really <laughs> special because we get to send some of our food, mm. herbs, and produce there. How about you show us some things that you're proud of and yeah. you really think is dope? Yeah, oh yeah, let me show you. I got plenty of things. I just remember when we first started, we had received, or we had just walked into this grant from the Chesapeake Bay, and they did a rain garden over here. And okay. so. Sure. This used to be two 12 foot rows of peppers and tomatoes when we first walked in and right. we said we could do a little more. Mm, mm. So then we expanded the beds and we turned them into eight by fours and had about six of them and then nice. 10 of them and then 14 and then nice. another row. Nice. These five rows, which we have also extended in the past year, were complete lawn. Right, we were out right, here right. with tillers twice. We were pickaxing these rows to try and get through it, but we figured out we could grow some different kind of cover crops. And so Fire. that's the special thing about these spaces is that some, some critical thinking and some different problems with just natural solutions. Check, check, So check. we grew some millet mm. uh, that really helped space out and aerate in the soil. And then we did some vetch nice. over that to nitrogen fixate. Mm. So it's a lot about realizing, a lot about trial and error, a lot mm. about asking questions. But certainly. And being so. okay with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And having the space evolve. Are we looking at blackberries We're over here? At blackberries, and can oh I say thornless as well? It's amazing how much they've grown, and they just, they're great to trellis and, and make a good border. Amazing edible fence yeah. vibes right here. Because we are like in the middle of a neighborhood. Yeah. Like, this is not like out in a rural. And that's a really incredible thing. I think such a blessing about not being isolated mm. be, because you get to acknowledge others and hear from them is also like just to show people what can be done because right. i think a lot of people have this mindset this is how a space has to be right. has to look sometimes right. even a colonized garden right, right, right and this right, is the plants right, that you should have and this right. is how you should space them right, right, right but right, 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 people right. get freedom and ideas right. to do whatever they want in their space huh. you create friendships and relationships and that's really valuable to yeah, us yeah i love that that's like the core of this stuff because the work mm -hmm. we do is really truly communal when we were thinking about a name, we thought about our really key principles. There's three principles for us. One is heritage, like our life is a story, we're a narrative, and what we have to share often stems from what we know and our experiences as well. Wow. So heritage has been really important for us. And then a part of that as well has been restoration. So seeing some restorative properties happening in the earth, like mm. with people and conversation. Wow. And then third has been reclaiming, knowing nice. that we belong here. Right. 
Right. There's a lot for us to unpack and discover right. and also own and steward and give. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a deep work and it requires like a real long game. Yeah. And so, you know, I find no other parallel than being here amongst your orchard. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Planting trees takes time. This is a beautiful uh, uh, pink apple tree. Yeah. Wow. Your apples look amazing. Oof. These are like Thank really you. lovely. Like there it's was, great to see, you know, fruit trees in production, like in, mm -hmm. you know, in the city. I remember various elder neighbors telling us there used to be fruit trees throughout Churchill. Mm -hmm. They used to be all around wherever you walk, and we walk around and pick them and eat them. Yeah. Um, everybody is starting to bear. It's really exciting. Yeah. We just recently we started growing and adding some apothecary herbal. Is like healing plants mm, so, uh, mm. for instance this yarrow that we've been selling but oh, also wow. we've been cutting it smells yeah, really really bright when you get oh wow balmy. yeah that's but it bit. uh it induces sweat takes down fever helps with gastric things but it's amazing because it's a pollinator a mm. beneficial plant so oh. we've been thinking about when the produce goes down when the season is not as uh invigorating and fast uh right, 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 growing right. we are needing to do some other things so we have blackberries, mm -hmm. which front porch is able to turn into jams and syrups. Wow. It's ideas like that and even the chickens. It's not just about eggs, although we definitely are collecting in there, but it's, <laughs> it's also about honoring creation and doing something better. Nice. A little better, because nice. nice. we know that the food and the meat industry, right, it's, right, right, it's not right. humane. Right. Let's go take a look at it. Let's go. Oh. This is an amazing space. Thank you. I am floored. I just feel like so many best practices going on. Mm. I see the young people, you know, you've got the chickens, them, yeah. you know, you got fencing, edible fencing. But <laughs> what's intriguing to me is that you have a whole other space. Mm. Is there a differentiation in terms of how these spaces are used? Here we do a lot of experimenting. Got it. So I would also say when I say we, I mean the team, I mean them. Obviously under the direction of me, just being able to guide them. Right, right, but right. these young people decide what they want to do. And yeah. then I help steer them in figuring out how to do it. We have partnered with various folks at Richmond Hill nice. and with 30, 31st Street Baptist Church yeah. to be in conversations and dialogue around what green space can mean yeah. for our community right. uh, and, right. and how we can impact others with our work. Nice, nice. Let's go check out some, the other space. Yeah, it sounds good. Yo, Churchill is changing, yo. This is amazing. This is crazy. You have more than one space, but this is like a whole situation. It's a whole situation. Welcome, and we have one of our team members, Jasmine Richardson. Hey, how you doing, Jasmine? Doing good. Yeah, good to, good to see you in the spot. So yeah. tell us what you got going on. Right here in this, these two rows, we have corn growing, and you can see it's starting to come up. Wow. <laughs> and so you all grew all this? Yeah. We started out in a greenhouse, and then we transplanted them outside. Mm -hmm. We have some plants even planted together, multiples on the same row. Yeah. Mm. You want to show them about what we got with the tomatoes, companions? Right here we have tomato, tomatoes, and right here are blue edible flowers. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice, nice, Kaborge. nice. Kaborge. They are called kaborge, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it taste like to you? <clears throat> it's kind of like um, a cucumber -y. Yeah. Kind of, kind of vibe. Cucumber forward. Mm, mm. So with the tomatoes, we trellis them with the strings, mm. and we, then we clip them so they would stay up. Nice. Right at the very base. Yeah. They have them, um, and man, they weren't here. These um, tomatoes weren't here just last week. They wow, really grow, this is grow, kicking really butt. Grow yeah. fast. And we put cardboard underneath, and then hay over it, just like that row you see, so we can control the weeding. Mm -hmm. More and more organic matter. That's the that's <laughs> that's the, the game. Yeah, that's the back to that's the, the earth. Show, Everything yeah. goes back to the earth. Beats. Oh. Hey, beats. Look at the beats, They're baby. There. Hey, beat, baby. Wow. They're ready too. They're ready to be picked. You guys are doing an excellent job. You want to show us what's going on in the greenhouse? Yeah, sure. All right, let's go over there. <laughs> so y'all growing melons, 
cucumbers. I see oh, some nice. lettuce, uh, some cat, well, cabbage. We're I about to do squash. some transplanting in here, some other things. So y'all grow this stuff and y'all are selling it? Or is it like, mm -hmm. it, is it being distributed to community? How's, what's the, what's the science? Both? Yeah. Okay, dope. We sell it at farmer's markets certain days of the week. Nice. And we also give it to community. Fire. And our front porch cafe. And the front porch cafe. So y'all got three points of distribution. You're trying. Oh, man. I'm, I'm, it's impressive. We want to really encourage people to try and, and do the growing thing versus the concrete asphalt thing. Yeah. It's great for people to live here, but yet, what if we could have more people on the farm, like right. experiencing? Experiencing green yeah. space. You know, the need for green space and like housing and development and gentrification mm -hmm. is something that you all feel on a regular. On a regular. Yeah. yeah. Let's walk down. We have been doing some mushroom. I see. Yeah. We've been plugging the mushrooms. Plugged them. Okay. So what kind of mushrooms are y'all trying to sprout? Like, what um, are you trying to? Let me see. So in here is lion's mane in mm. one of them. And the other is, I think it's a blue oyster. Okay. Okay. We have the gold oyster well, on the I mean, side. that's fascinating. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're growing mushrooms in the middle of Churchill in the city. Yeah. On the back lot. Mm -hmm. Like what? It's cool. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Magnificent stuff. Man, you guys are moving. I did. I hear that you all had uh, worm compost, worm worm farm. What? What's 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 the yeah. deal y'all on with that? Yeah. So we put food into the bin. Have some worms in there, some red wigglers, special. Wow. Not that special, but they are a special kind of worm that eats fast through yeah. that kind of produce. And so then they turn it into stuff and we put it on the ropes. We try. So basically the idea with the worm compost is that y'all drop, you know, things that the worms can eat, right? Mm hmm And they're living on the bottom. They come and eat the stuff and then mm -hmm. they go back down. And then they go back down. Fire. So, Allison, we're here in the meditation garden. Tell us about your origin in this work. Like, what brought you to this space? Like, what drew you forth? And I'm gonna say, it, I didn't find it. It found me mm. Mm. so many times. So, both my peoples, my mom's side and my dad's side, um, have an a history of growing within it and nice. a narrative of that. Wow. Um, at least my mom, they were sharecroppers who took on their land wow. in South Carolina, and so they oh, owned wow. their land wow. Wow. early on. Oh, okay. Acres, acres shared through the throughout the family. And nice, nice. It's really special, um, very difficult. I'd gone down there several times as a young kid and, you know, sat in the sugarcane fields and cut that with my grandmother and mm. chewed that and shelled peas and whatnot and, and, and enjoyed heritage foods. My great grandmother, I went into her house and she said, come on in baby. And I sat at her table and she had these turnips, this bowl of seasoned turnips. Mm. Those turnips are just the best thing. And they, t they taste like love. Mm. Um, they taste like home. Nice. And I think about that, just this recognition, this kind of imprint as knowing my name, I'd say I feel called to the work that I do because in so many various moments of my life, I've I've been found in it. This idea of legacy mm -hmm. resonates with, you know, your work, you know, and especially with the work of these young people. So tell us a little bit about what you hope to impart as a result of their work at these spaces. It, it's gonna be really <coughs> critical that black folk are reattached to the land. Mm. There's such trauma and disconnect across the community mm -hmm. about being out in space, green space and nature. Just uh, stigmas. I mean, I think about a number of people who have come onto the team who had never really touched or played in the dirt because they were told, no, don't play, that's dirty. Right. Don't, you know, or even having young people doing a hard, good work. Right. And I'm asking them, you know, morale boost, hey, how, how's everybody feeling? Mm. What's, what does it feel like to be in the dirt right now? And they're saying, I feel like a slave. Mm. And I think that that's sad that the initial 
response and connection <laughs> is I feel like a slave mm. when I'm in the dirt, mm. when I'm growing something, when I'm striving, right. I feel like a slave. And right. so right. turning that around, that whole mindset and perspective, going through this life process and watching from a, a dead <laughs> seed that gives life, right. nurturing and cultivating, giving thanks in the land, like striving and working hard and seeing something grow holistically to its harvest point, right. to its point of saying goodbye. Like right. there's so many life lessons. I think those are the kinds of lessons that prepare people to live a good life yeah, in the sure. world. And so even if my young people don't go out and become farmers for the rest of their life. I think they carry with them the sense of thanksgiving and purpose and mm. appreciation for what's right. Yeah. We're in Churchill. Mm. Are we? Yeah. Right? Richmond, Virginia, rapidly gentrifying. As a community that is historically black, historically been redlined, how does the work of Legacy Farm intersect with this, with the transformations that are happening around it? It's really difficult. I, in some ways, don't know how to answer your question. As we have m many flavors of folks and how they want or don't want to be involved. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the, the quintessential white person walking their dog, you know, by all the time. And some people are really embracing who we are and <coughs> want to sew in or give encouragement. Right. Uh, and whereas we welcome that, we also want people to listen, watch, also give space for others to come in who need to be in the space. We want people to know our name. We want to be a neighbor. Check. So out here, we want to share with people. Mm. We want to elevate folks with with equipment, with tools, right. resources. Right. Uh, we just started doing workshops on Saturday. Mm. You know, just having real organic conversations about what you do see, and hopefully we right. can begin to create a base. I appreciate you sharing that. I think that there's um, a quality to helping to educate community that this type of experience has multifaceted benefits. Mm -hmm. You know, from stormwater management stuff to yeah. urban heat island effect to, you know, increased access to healthy food to the social kind of like people are able to come together. But, you know, those pressures of like, I need to make a buck that developers come with like, I know it's hard. It's a hard pressure to, 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 to balance out. Help us describe what do you see as your work? My you know? work <laughs> is to be here for the young people. It's to give them, as a workforce development right. supervisor, right. hard and soft skills for entering the workforce period. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. presence, showing up on time. You know, those things are important, even just coming through and mm. saying, like, I'm a reliable person with something to offer in this world and you should hire me. Knowing that they are somebody that they have a lot to give in this world and mm. that they are worth mm. listening to, sure. uh, worth more than just hiring, just like worth being esteemed. They have worth. I'm hoping to launch these young people out so that they can continue best where they need to yeah, be. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more. Tell the uh, audience how they can find you. We do sell uh, currently at Birdhouse Farmers Market every second and fourth Tuesday, but we also sell at the Black Farmers Market on the third Saturday of every month. Nice. And are hoping to do more, be around, connect more yeah. in other ways. Come visit us on the farm or check out our website for how to volunteer and support. Thank you so much for sharing time with best. me today. It's been great. I really appreciate you. You know, you're a definite boon to this work. I mean, uh, we need more women you know, in the front, especially black women who are embracing uh, this work. So I'm honored to be able to share space with you today and, and, uh, and, and amplify the amazing work that you're doing. My name is Deron Chavis. You've been tuning into Black Space Matters. Y'all make sure y'all tune into the next episode. Looking forward to seeing you. Like and subscribe. Thank you so much for sharing time with us.